It's time for Dart Talk. Brought to you by thedartzone.com. Stay in the zone. Thedartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor and Windy City Fabricators, America's premier fabricators of orthotics and prosthetics. And Redwood Darts, America's newest tungsten darts. Stand straight and tall and hit them all. Redwood Darts. And now, here are your hosts, Mystery Mark and Steve P. Okay, welcome to Dart Talk. Welcome. <laughs> How's that look? Oh, this is not comfortable. Is that, I, I don't. Know, that's what they were asking for in the chat. Uh, see, we deliver. It's yeah. interactive TV. <laughs> Dart Talk brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. Dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks. Windy City Fabricators, Redwood Darts. Big show tonight. Big show. We have uh, a guest waiting in the wings uh, as we speak. Uh, I'm going to get the disclaimer right out of the way here. That would help. Because uh, you, you're supposed to remind me of this. I'm not supposed to think about it. You didn't even have time. Own. What was that, two seconds? Yeah, well, that's okay. What am I supposed to do? Say, stay in the zone, run the disclaimer. No, that would be bad. <laughs> okay. The views, opinions, rants, and rampages expressed on Dart Talk do not necessarily reflect individually or collectively those of our sponsors, co sponsors, wannabe hosts, hearing impaired critics, or those with a penchant for attitudinal dysfunction. We at Dart Talk strive to provide you, the listener, with an educational, entertaining, and fun filled experience each and every week. If after the show you, the listener, find yourself feeling uneducated, unentertained, and or bored, we at Dart Talk consider that your own problem. Okay, so good luck with that. Uh, how was your weekend? You're, you're a happy guy uh, now. Mine was fine. Big Hurt got in the Hall of Fame. That was nice. Life is yeah. good. Yeah. Big Dog made it, or Mad Dog made it. Mad Dog made it. I was happy it. about that. I oh, always yeah, admired yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, I think they're all, you might not agree with Glavin, but I think they're all worthy. Yeah, well, but, I don't think Glavin's thrown a strike yet. But, but, you know, the amount of White Sox that get in the Hall of Fame, you know, it's not. It's few and far between. And actually, Maddox could have been a Cub with the hat on, but. Well, We'll see what way. the Hall of Fame determines. I'm pretty sure they'll put him in for Atlanta. Yeah, I'm but sure. the only reason I bring up, you Doesn't know, baseball. Doesn't he get to choose? And, what do you mean the Hall of Fame? Oh yeah, choose? oh yeah. Because Wade Boggs tried to sell it to Tampa. Oh really? Oh yeah. So oh, they I said thought... from now on we're picking the oh, hats. Okay. That's why Dawson ended up coming going in as a expo. Okay. Which was kind of lame. Yeah. No, but the only reason I bring up Greg Maddox is because of all the ball players I've ever seen. This is a guy that could be a champion darter. Just his approach to pitching and, and you know, how he focused <laughs> his on fundamentals accuracy. and his accuracy, <laughs> his composure, all that stuff. Yeah. I always thought, you know, if there was a ball player that decided he wanted to be a world champion darter, Greg Maddox could, could do it. I hope he doesn't hear this. We have enough competition as it is. <laughs> um, anyway, big show. What do we got? Uh, uh, we got uh, we got a segment on uh, Jim Widmayer in Lakeside on the 10 reasons why he did not win. The 10 reasons Jim Widmayer did not win, and I wrote them all down. I wrote them all down. You wrote them all down. There was actually yes. 11. I had to cut one. Oh, all right. So, yeah, we, didn't so have, just, we didn't have enough time. No, we enjoyed watching Jimmy. We were rooting for him. Uh, he, had a tough, he had a tough draw playing Steve Button right off, you know, in the second round. Well, technically it's the first round. Right. But he got through his play-in, you know, and I thought, you know, he would get through his nerves and, and you know, he would play pretty good. Didn't work out too well for him, but we're going to talk about that. We got, uh, we got an announcement on the new uh, – Players Challenge Series. The Players Challenge Series. We are going live with this. So, yeah, we're definitely – we'll start with that. We will talk about that, of yeah. course. Uh, and then we have a uh, – it is called the Alternate Universe segment of darts. Yeah, I, I, I've got something to say about the BDO's coverage. And, and I did watch Lakeside, and I actually watched it way more than I did last year. And part of it was, you know, because Jimmy was in there too. But mm -hmm. I watched a whole bunch of matches, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And, of course, we have the Darter of the Year coming up. Right. The announcement, 2013 so, Darter of the Year. Yeah. Uh, we're still taking the first person in the chat room to uh, guess our Darter of the Year wins that uh, scoreboard. And we nobody has guessed yet. I haven't looked in the chat. Correctly. The, I, Nobody's I will, guessed correctly yet. Before we announce it, I will look through the chat, and the first person with the right answer 
we'll get uh, we'll get a prize. We'll get that. that <laughs> we'll scoreboard. just determine what the prize is later. But hey, you'll no, get no, a no. Prize. We showed it. We showed a picture of <laughs> oh, it. Oh, that's right. Okay. It was a the the magnetic From scoreboard with the little. It but looks the people like... that didn't tune in last week, you just said we'll get a prize. So like. Oh they'll, right. They'll okay. be listening. We should like... remember. <laughs> right. Not everybody is is in here yeah. every single. Hey, show you'll get a prize except us. So. And you know, sometimes the love of my life, she can't make it all the time either. Mm-hmm. I I don't even know if she's in the chat room right now. So what's first? What are we doing first? We're going to talk about the Players Challenge series. Yes, right. we want to. We want to talk about that. All right. So here's the deal. Because it's I mean, getting ready. I mean, it not only yeah. is it an announcement, but it's going to oh, yeah. start. Oh, yeah, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. So so just a background for the people that listen to this show that don't know what I'm talking about, because it, it's been in the planning stages now for almost a month. Mm-hmm. And I've been taking it kind of in baby steps because I, I, I wanted to make sure everybody was happy with the concept and agreed that it was something we should do. And, and it was a unanimous yes. Everybody said it was a great idea, so I'm like, okay, let's let's try to do this. So, here's what the players the players challenge series is for people that don't know. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to have one, sometimes more, feature matches at all these uh, events tournaments. Right. Well, at at, at all these tournaments, we're going to have one or two or three. It depends on the tournament. Feature matches. Uh, the matches are going to be a race to ten. Alternate start 501, where you do a PDC diddle at the beginning, and if it's tied 9-9, you diddle for the last leg. Right? So it's as okay. fair, a, fair a test of darts that I could think of. And the idea here is that we're going to put these matches on center stage at existing tournaments, kind of like a bonus. Mm-hmm. Like you go to these tournaments, and you, know, you get to play, and you get to see everybody, and you get to have a good time, but also you're going to see like one great feature match that um, we figure is compelling. So what I did was I put together uh, pairings based on who the local people at the tournament would really want to see play, right? And it was funny. I talked to Darren today, and I kind of said, you know, everybody's tired of watching you and Larry play in the final. I mean, you know, you can't rig it where they meet in the first round or anything because there's a lot of good players in America, and I'm convinced that part of the reason that we don't do better internationally is because we don't prepare. Mm -hmm. We don't prepare in the way you need to prepare to succeed in in the formats that these guys have to play. When Darren went to the World Championships and Jimmy went to Lakeside and everything, it's a pretty uphill climb based on what we do here for them to succeed. So my, my idea here was like kind of solving and killing like five different birds with one stone. How many how many matches? Well, we're going to try to get the round of 16. So we have 32 people mm-hmm. that have agreed to play. We we're going to try to get the round of 16 done by the end of March, actually before the end of March. Okay. So we can get the next round in and what we're going to do is we're going to put these matches on at existing tournaments. So everybody gets a chance to see, you know, the best players in America play up close and personal. And, you know, cheer them on, root against them, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's a chance for, for the darters to be fans. And it's also, to my mind, one of the things that is a huge disadvantage to the darters in America is that we don't have exhibitions. These guys in England, you know, like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, travel around. They show up at clubs. They show up at pubs. And, you know, they, they kind of meet and greet the public. They'll take on, you know, 10 players or something. Everybody has a good time. You get to meet these guys. You get to talk to them. We don't do stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And, you know, it's funny. You know, I don't know. Whenever we became the complaint desk of American (laughs) Darts, it was a while ago. um, You know, people complain that they don't get a chance to, you know, talk to this guy, talk to that guy. You know, and, and, you know, these guys are, you know, trying to play. And even though, you know, you're in between matches, some guys... You know, try to keep their focus. Other guys, you know, go disappear and try to relax in between matches, stuff like that. So it's difficult for everybody to, to have access to the professionals. And I'm like, well, here's a way to do so it. So what does the whole player's challenge entail? Well, what it entails is, a you know, a series of matches played at all these different tournaments. And it's a winner-take-all $2,000 prize to the okay. winner. Uh, there's no entry fee. 
Sponsors are taking care of the two thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and what we're going to try to do is grow this into something that's bigger next year. So, to give you an idea, at the Ray Chesney this weekend, which starts Friday, uh, same place they always have it. Right. Um, we're going to have Darren Young, who's the you know number one player in America for the last I don't know two three years, whatever, whatever ranking system you use. Uh, he's number one in my book, and uh, the top player in the ADA who's also on the Phoenix uh, world team, who's Mark Fair, who's also from, uh, I believe, central Pennsylvania, somewhere around Harrisburg or something. So they're going to play at the Ray Chesney. And it's it's more of an exhibition match, although there's money at the line. Right. Right. Or there's money down the line for the winner. The idea behind this is is more of an exhibition, where you get to see these guys play, you get to see them compete, you get to see them up close, watch how they play. And I think that's a benefit to everybody. I mean, I don't know how many tournaments you go to where you're busy playing, so you can't see anyone else play. True. I don't know how many women's matches I've seen. I've been on, you know, going to tournaments for six, seven years. I've probably watched five women's Mm -hmm. matches, and four of them were my girlfriend. Right? I mean, because you're busy playing. Which would be a legitimate question, then. Are there women in this player challenge series? Okay, here's... Unfortunately, I only have two hands. So we did not include any Canadians, and Mm -hmm. we did not include any women. However... Next year, we're going to be able to do that. I mean, it, it, it's difficult enough for me to just deal with... Well, it's only, got, it's only been a month well, to get yeah. this whole I thing mean, going. Give me, so. give me some time here. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a, you know, believe, believe it or not, it's, it's already taken a lot of time. and It's going to take a lot more, but I'm willing to do it because I, th- I believe in this. I believe that this is something that's going to make everybody happy. There's no affiliation with the BDO, the ADO, the PDC, NAPTA, anything. This is just players playing, which is, you know to my mind, kind of a pure way of doing things. Right. Yeah, let's give two grand to the winner. I'm sure he could use it. You know, it's not really going to be about the money, though. It's going to be more about, you know, letting people see, you know, high-quality darts. Because, you know, like I was saying before, a lot of people don't get a chance to watch. When, when you said everybody's on board, is that kind of the response you got? That I haven't they, heard one person say it's a bad idea. That they're all happy, though. I mean, yeah. that's what they want. It's not the two grand they, they want. Well... I, I explain the concept to everybody, and, you know, we've been kind of talking about it, you know, kind of behind the scenes. It's kind of leaked out, so, you know, some people have found out about it. But I, I'm convinced that this is going to be win-win, win-win-win, win-win-win-win-win. Mm-hmm. For us as a show, it's going to be awesome because we're going to be able to cover darts more as a sport than we ever have before because now we can focus on these matches. One of the requirements is that these guys keep statistics so we can analyze what they do. Right, and we'll get them on the show. Talk about this. Talk about that. So if we can focus on you know you know one or two big matches a month, I think that's going to help everybody. Right. We get to promote the individual tournaments that are hosting these matches, kind of as a thank you. Yeah. Like so, we're giving a plug for the Ray Chesney, which is you know a fun tournament. I've been to it a few times. It's it's rough for me to commit to going to a tournament like that because you never know what the weather's going to do. I mean, if the tournament would have been. Three days Last ago, I, I never would have gotten out of here. <laughs> right. I mean, the planes were like literally frozen to the gates. Yeah. So it's hard for me to travel. So I'm not going to be able to go to all these tournaments. But the players know what they need to do, and I think it's going to be awesome. So actually, to talk about uh, this weekend, we have uh, Mark Fair mm-hmm. on the line. Uh, if he can unmute you his want to talk to thing. him before or after the break. Oh, we're already on the break now. Let's talk to him now. Okay. Uh, Mark, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Steve. Hey, how you doing? Say hi to Mystery Mark. Hi, Mark. Pretty good. How you doing, Mark? Good. Okay, so uh, first off, for the people that don't know you, I, I just gave a real brief introduction. I said you were the, the ADA's number one player last year. You were on the Phoenix World Team, World Cup Team, whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, what did I miss? What do you want to What do you want to tell people about yourself? <laughs> not to put you on the spot, no. but I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Um, as far as the Phoenix thing goes, uh, I shot on the USA team three times this year. I shot, uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Korea and here in Vegas. Okay. And, and you've also played, you know, some of the tournaments. I know you were at the, the PDC in Atlantic city, uh, last yes. year as well. So you do get around, you know, in the States yeah. too. Yes. Uh, I, I, the PDC tournament, I had a good run at the PDC tournament this year, actually. Yeah, I believe you waxed me pretty good on Saturday, now that I think of it. <laughs> How did he get on the show? 
No, yeah, I thought right? you played. No, I thought you played. You know, some impeccable five hundred one. Um, how long have you been playing? I've been playing since about two thousand five, competitively. Competitively. So, how long before that? I would say I picked up a dart in a bar, two thousand three, two thousand four. So about ten years. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So that makes you that makes you a veteran. You, you, you've played internationally, you've played around the States, and you also play soft tip as well as steel. Yes. What, uh, which do you prefer? Um, I would say steel. I, I, think it's, um, I just think it's more of a competitive game for myself. Um, soft tip, I just think that it's an easier game until you get to the higher level. Once you're at the higher level, it's a, definitely a just as competitive as steel. Yeah, my take on soft tip, you know, since I'm misquoted all over the country, I think it's it it's easier to hit stuff in soft tip, but it it sometimes seems to me it's harder to win. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. Um, like I said, the fact I just think that in the lower level of soft tip, it's not as fun of a game for someone like myself as much as it is to the higher level. Um, it seems to me that when you're playing league soft tip and that type of stuff, it seems like you have more, uh, a lot more people who want to play the handicap system and stuff like that. At least in my area, I could say that. But uh, once you get to the higher level, it's uh, it's a tough match the whole way through. It doesn't matter who you're playing. Yeah, I'd have to. That, that's my take, or that's my experience with it, too. People like, you know, like the, the recreational players especially like right. that handicap system. They don't want to yeah. go get... Yeah, I played in it. Yeah, I mean... It, when, I first, gonna, when I first came here, it was like, yeah, it was... Well, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's it's rough if, if you play once a week to play somebody who plays five times a week. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... I'm not a big fan of handicaps, but Which I mean... do you I, get to play more? Um, I would say I play more steel just because I enjoy it more. I think um, for about three years there, I kind of took off the whole steel tip or the whole soft tip scene. I really wasn't playing much soft tip at all there for two and a half, three years. And then about a year and a half ago, I kind of got back into it again and had some good runs at some good tournaments. So it kind of struck my interest back up again. Nice. Well, getting toward, uh, Getting toward this Players Challenge series, uh, we matched you up against uh, Darren Young, who you may have heard of. He's another, <laughs> <laughs> he's another Pennsylvania resident. Um, what do you think your chances are uh, playing a guy uh, like Darren in a long format uh, race to 10 501 match? Well, as you said earlier, long format, it's, uh, it show, it's definitely going to show the better player. Um, I haven't really played too much long format besides the PDC events. Um, he's definitely got more experience than me. I, I can agree to that. Uh, he's also he's taller. A, he's been in a situation quite a few. <laughs> you are right. He he does have a lot of myself, but oh, are we losing him? Uh, we're losing. Yeah, himself. I lost you there for a oh. second. But okay, uh, go ahead and uh, finish. Speak your into the there. mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I was saying was is I, I definitely think he has a lot more experience at it than me, but I've also gave him some good runs in them long form in them long format tournaments. So I mean I, I'm I feel confident playing against anybody. I feel my game in the past few months has been I've been playing well, so I'll give it a shot and see how it goes. What's your what's your feeling on the player challenge series like with this you know, exhibition also being in the Ray Chesney at the same time? Um, I, I think it's awesome. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great concept. We really need to find more things like it where we are running the long format. Like he said, when you go overseas, it just, it, it's, it can only help. It's not going to hurt at all. I mean, that seems to be where we struggle overseas is the longer format stuff. Yeah, one of the other things that, uh, I mean, there's I, there's a lot of reasons that I thought this was a good idea, but one of them is, like, when if you look at it, we, we were showing Jimmy Widmer's match before the show, and, you know, it's a little different when you're on a stage and everybody's looking at you play versus, you know, a floor match where you're kind of off somewhere and everybody else is busy and there's maybe, you know, four or five people watching you. 
it's it's something I think everybody kind of needs to get used to. You need to get used to you know playing online or, or you know playing when they're streaming. You need to get used to stuff like that. Uh, you've been overseas. Um, did did you find it a little bit off putting? You know, playing in a foreign country, stuff like that. Were you less comfortable than you would normally be? I would say the first time I went over, um, uh, the big stages, uh, definitely a lot more people. Um, the lighting, the lighting's tough itself. I mean, you're up on a stage and it's hot. <laughs> and it's hot. Yeah, I, I've noticed. I noticed that uh, we were when we were over in Korea. It was uh, well lit up and. It was definitely a good 15 degree difference from the floor to the stage. Did you do anything to uh, compensate for that? Did you like carry like a rosin bag or some chalk or something? Some of these guys uh, I see wear wristbands and stuff. Yeah, my hands not too much. I definitely I uh, I had a towel. Uh, that was pretty much all I I had for the situation. Um, I'm not really a person to put things on my hands and stuff while I'm playing, so. Right. Okay. So you like your chances against Darren. If we were going to set odds, what what do you like? <laughs> <laughs> we banter a little That's bit about odds and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know how to set these things. I mean, I don't know how to set that either. How do you set dar- <laughs> odds on yourself? Well, would you say would you say you're the favorite or Darren's the favorite? I would definitely go with Darren being the favorite. I mean, as as long as I've been playing, he he has been one of the best players in our country for sure. If oh, we said he was one to five, would that be, you know, uh, yeah, I would say that upsetting would be to you, or you know, yeah. like no, like, I think that would be fair. But, okay, yeah. so if we made Darren one to five, and we made you what, like three to one, you think that'd be fair? Right. Yeah. Not that we're taking action on this, mind no, you. No, this we are is not. just no, sort I mean, of a... I, like I said. I agree with you guys. I mean, I agree. I couldn't sit here and say that the odds should be in my favor whatsoever. I mean, he's definitely a long time great player in the usa and he's proved himself time and time again well you're going to get a crack at him you're going to get a whack at him this weekend so as soon as you guys set a date and time you let us know and and you know we'll we'll publicize it you get to kick off the dart players challenge yeah you guys are the guinea pigs (laughs) yeah (laughs) hey i'm just like i said i'm glad to be a part of it i think it's a good thing i think uh it can only help the game and i think it has a lot of good to come out of it Awesome. Win or lose, you're going to be a first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, win the diddle, and you'll be the guy who throws the, the first, you know, yeah. the first the dart. First in challenge the, uh, dart. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hoping that, that this catches on because, you know, we can, we can turn this into something really special. Yeah, and I, I, I think we're we well can. on our way. Guys like you participating, I think uh, we're halfway home. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Uh, thanks for coming on, Mark. We wish you all the best in, uh, in Philly, and maybe you can uh, come on next week and tell us how it went. All right, sounds good, Steve. Thank you a lot. All right, thanks, Mark. Thanks. That was yep. Mark Fair from uh, Central Pennsylvania. Uh, what'd you think? I thought he was nice. He was yeah, good, he's nice guy. Yeah, it sounds excited. Hong Kong. I can't imagine playing in Hong Kong or or, or just. Uh, I remember walking in Lower Manhattan. I, I went to lunch in Chinatown, and I was like a head taller than everyone on the entire street. And I keep imagining that Hong Kong must be like that. It just must be a very strange, strange experience. Okay, uh, we'll be back uh, in a second. You're listening to Dart Talk with Mystery Mark, Steve Penunciaman, and we'll be right back.
Okay, back for the second quarter, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Redwood Darts and Windy City Fabricators. You betcha. <sighs> Ten reasons why we'd lost. Yes, yes. I do, I do actually have a question for you, though. Yeah, why, question we for have me? Mark Fair on, but yeah. why did we not have Darren Young on as well? I mean, why did we not get both? Did you think he was ducking us? Who, Darren? Yeah. Did you think Darren was talking to us? I don't think that. I'm just asking you, <clears throat> well, he might have. Or maybe well, you didn't call him. I don't know. No, no, no. I <laughs> talked to him. D- Darren was traveling. Oh, and, okay. And he couldn't. Uh, and I asked him to send me like a little selfie video that we could play on the show. And apparently, you know, he couldn't figure out what button to press on his oh, smartphone. Okay. <laughs> but no, no, he's uh, he's looking forward to this. And, uh, okay. you know, all the players I've talked to are really all in, you know, when it comes to thinking it's a great idea. So this is going to be this is going to be a huge hit, and and you know the idea, and I don't know if I touched on this before. The idea next year is we're going to expand it to more players. Mm-hmm. We're going right. to bring in the Canadians, and we're going to bring in the women. Right. But we have to kind of get all the kinks ironed out before yeah, we get expand your feet wet. it. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. starting small, and then we're going to try to grow it from there. So that's that's the total plan. Um, what was your other question? I didn't have another question. I thought we were going to do Darter of the Year. Darter of the Year. Right, so we're supposed. To, I have to check the chat room. Yes, you do. Will you check the chat room? Well, now, okay, we got some. Uh, well, we got I've some been good guesses the chat here, room, but nobody's guessed it yet. Yeah, Phil Taylor. No, I'm not giving it to Phil Taylor when he Sean was Nar- out. Sean Naran. I think he means singing in the rain. I know. Sean I know Naran. who he means. A lot of good. <laughs> a lot of good guesses here. Um, I like the Mark Fair guess. So he's a guest on the show. Yeah. Well, that. At least somebody's thinking. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, well, here's the deal with Darter of the Year. I mean, y- you got guys that had like you know basically spectacular uh, performances. Seasons. Yeah, right. sp- great seasons. I mean, the season is now like eleven months. I mean, it's becoming like tennis. Like, there's no off season. But um, we looked at Darren. We looked at Darren, who's at the top of the money list, number one ranked American. You know, played in the World Championship again. Hard to ignore. He swept uh, the NWDS events, which were the biggest money events of the year, right? Right. Um, we we had a, a nomination, more than one actually, uh, for Larry Butler. You know, Larry, you know, was basically in the finals of everything. He won two of the Americas tours on on the the Darts Live Americas tours, and uh, also Benny Dirsch won two of those. So you know, we're looking at all that, and. You know, I'm asking myself, well, what's our criteria for Darter of the Year? Because what happened was I was watching some stupid movie. They used to sell these, they used to sell these mirrors, and it said, you know, time it had like it was like a blank time magazine and it said this person is in the of movie, the year. Or they actually this used is in to the movie. sell these No, no, no. Oh. Well, they did used to sell these because I remember seeing them. No, they had a mirror and it was like a blank time magazine cover that said, you know, Times Man of the Year or something, and then you would go by and see your face mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I'm like, that's pretty egotistical. But then I was like, well, look at what Time Magazine does with their, with their person of the year. I mean, they come up with, with uh, it, it's not like you have a cut and dried criteria. Like you're, you're, you're darter of the year because you won the money list or you're darter of the year because you won this tournament or that tournament or you're number one in the ADO or, or whatever. They look at it more holistically. They look at it as a matter of like, well, what, what did you accomplish this year? Mm-hmm. And how does, that, how does that help the greater good? Right? Right. I mean, if you look at both Darren and Larry, and, you know, I don't know Benny Durst that well, but I know he's, he's well-respected and well-liked, you know, in, in the soft tip community. All of them represent the sport, you know, really well. All of them, um, and if I'm leaving anybody out, like, like Leonard Gates had, like, a spectacular run, stuff like that. I mean, they all represent the sport really well. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't really heard anybody complain that, you know, this guy's a jerk, that guy's a jerk, this guy dissed me. I mean, you don't really hear about anything like that from these guys. But, you know, it, it's kind of weird on my, you know, when I get downtime and I start really analyzing stuff, I'm like, well, when it comes to the sport of darts in America in 2013, who can you point to as being like the head and shoulders above everyone else? Who's the star? Of American darts, and I could only think of one name. Okay. You know, when I when I really started looking at everything, and I'm like, you know, when you talk about everything, like like who did the most who did the most for the sport right. of darts is Anthony Eugenia. 
I was going to do a drum roll, but we're going to do a drum you roll. Give me well, a chance. no, because you know Anthony Eugenia, you know, gets this thing going in New York. He gets the NWDS thing right. going and runs those tournaments. He's over here doing this. He's over here doing that. I mean, who did more for the sport of darts in America than Anthony Eugenia did in twenty thirteen? Right. I'm ready to hear arguments because I I don't think anyone did. Maybe you might hear an argument from the man himself. Uh, well, let's see <laughs> if Anthony Eugenia can join us. Anthony, are, are, are you there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I scammed you. <laughs> uh, good, gentlemen, good evening. First good. off. Hi. S- secondly, thank you very much. Th- thirdly, yes, I'm, I'm on hold, and that conversation is developing, and I said, oh, my goodness, they're sandbagging me. <laughs> well, we that had to. That is true. But but you know we'll we, we'll have you on to talk about Jimmy Wood's match, which is for the people that are listening. I told Anthony uh, to come on the show because I wanted to talk about Jimmy Wood's match, just so we could surprise him. Because you know, for all the stuff you do, for basically free, that everyone benefits from. I mean, I can't imagine anybody more deserving than you, and I and I mean that sincerely. I'm jealous. I don't live in New York, to be honest, just so I could participate in 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 the stuff you do. You could. Well, that's problematic. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find you an apartment. There, right yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> if you, if anybody could do it, you could. Yeah. Oh, I wow. hope your Thank couch you is so really much. big. Hey. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I am you, you, a blabbermouth like myself. You got me a little speechless. Well, hey, let me tell you something. I mean, in in all sincerity, no one has done more that I can think of since we started doing the show to help the sport of darts advance from where it was two and a half years ago to today than you have. I can't think of anybody close. The, some of the guys have played spectacular darts, and, and you know, you know they, they deserve all the credit for that. But uh, this is our call, and this is what, right. what we decided. Well, well, thank you, and I, and I did, you know, as I said, as I listened to the to the run up that you did, I I, I I do see what where where the angle was coming from. I thought to myself, okay, well, if they name this, if it was <clears throat> Dart Personality or or Dart um, uh, Dart Person of the Year, you know, um, I'm like, well, okay, that that kind of makes sense, you know. I, I think Darter people uh, immediately go to a player, but um, I, I very much appreciate it, and I will. Um, right up front, of course, you do have to. I, well, I want to acknowledge some of the players that you had uh, um, uh, spoke about. Of course, uh, you've got uh, Darren Young, who had uh, a great year, top to bottom, New World Art Series, and uh, just about in top four of all the uh, NACT events. And, I'm, and of course, I'm sure I'm not up to date on all of his, you know, open accomplishments. Uh, Larry Butler was probably the most, uh, the, the hottest player uh, in most of the middle of the year. He, I think he ticked off two wins in the N- N- NACT, and um, of course, the two uh, Americas Tour wins, and he won the overall point thing which was massive and uh again a whole bunch of open accomplishments i'm sure i'm missing um uh a guy who might if he kept it up might have been the overall you know dark player of the year i'll use that term to ch- you know leonard gates i mean what a summer yeah he had, had he um, had he started earlier you know he exactly, probably would have been or, at or lakeside kept it up and it's no yeah. dis- Respect. I'm not like I said. I'm sure I'm missing some events, but like what we all saw, we all saw over the summer him going to Music City and and Atlantic City and uh, a couple of, and you and uh, uh, and Stanford. I watched him play Jimmy on stage in, in Stanford. So I mean, my goodness, that you know, uh, sizzling hot over the summer. Um, and of course, uh, you know, my neighborhood here. We're going to talk about Witty uh, having a great year, at the top of the ADO list, going to Lakeside, going to Europe a couple of times, all that stuff. So so first and foremost, I'm always going to going to uh, uh, acknowledge the players and Robin Curry had a great year winning the uh, uh, New World Art Series uh, in New Orleans and Callie West again had a, a really rock solid year so you know all those players top to bottom I always acknowledge um, um, but you know first and foremost because they're they're what we sent to roll this around, but I do very much appreciate you guys uh, acknowledging my hard work, uh, and it's and it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank you. You obviously you obviously have a passion for this. What keeps you going? <clears throat> oh boy, what a question. Um, a few things come to mind. Um, some. I don't, not some satisfaction, the satisfaction, the, the, the satisfaction I get when we co- accomplish a tournament or a series of events um, and we get to pull something off. And I can really see in the players' eyes 
that this was something that they enjoyed and they benefited from um, and they're a better player because of it. And that's that's really what I'm trying to do is make players – not make players better but give them a chance to, to make themselves better. Um, I, I, and it's just uh, I take on project after project and what keeps me going? Kind of a f- – I'll we'll get into a little psychology, a little – a fear of – a fear of things failing. I want to see everything succeed. So I want to see everything through. I want to take stuff on and I want to make it the best it can. And as you said, a true passion for it. I've, I've loved this stuff and I've been into it since I was a kid. I grew up playing darts and my parents played. So this is a lifelong, uh, lifelong passion and love for me. That's awesome. Okay. Well, uh, congrats again, Anthony. Stay with us. We're going to take a break, but then we do want to actually come back yeah, and talk for about the real reason match. you were on the show. Maybe. But, the uh, second real reason. Okay, you, I'll, I'll stick around if you want to bring me in for Widmeyer. And uh, uh, again, thank you so much. And I, uh, I have to thank the players who participate in the things that I put on because uh, no matter how how good of an idea I may think it is or other folks think of it is, if the players don't come and support anything, it doesn't work. So I very much appreciate all the support and, uh, and, the, uh, and the great recognition. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hey, anytime, man. You deserve it. All right, you're listening you. to Dart Talk with uh, Mystery Mark, Steve Ponsielman, and Anthony Eugenia waiting in the wings, and uh, we'll be right back. views and opinions expressed on Dart Talk are those of the hosts. They in no way should be misrepresented, misinterpreted, or made to claim that the universe is against you, your family, your city, or the darting community at large. Okay, back for the uh, second half. Brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. Dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. And uh, we still have Anthony Eugenia with us. I, I it's like to... half Unabomber. Well, the hoodie only goes halfway. It's got a. <laughs> it's it's like kind of like Phil Luck playing poker. I don't yeah. know how Sean Narain can see anything out of these glasses. I literally you can't am, see a thing. Am nearly They're blind dark. here. Yeah. I am nearly blind. So. I'm not going to be able to read anything in the chat. It's just a blur. Um, but no, we we did post uh, that I was going to talk about the ten yes. reasons uh, Witt, Witt didn't Mayer win. Did not win. Now you have them in front of you there, and and we'll go through them one by one uh, with Anthony. Hopefully they're ten in the reasons right order. Witt lost. Right. If you want to scroll down to number one, are they numbered? No. Oh, they're not. No, they're we're going to lose count. Okay. So okay, are you with us, Anthony? <laughs> I'll do my uh, best. I just, to I just came back in. I just unmuted. I'll do my here. best to keep you on. Okay. Well, okay, here's reason number one why why Wid didn't win.
And one of the things I noticed, and this is part of the reason I asked Mark about, you know, playing in Hong Kong, is if, if you just look at the body language between uh, Jimmy and Stephen Bunting, I mean, it's obvious who's more relaxed and who's pressing, like, from the very first start. And this is one of these things where I, I think Jeff Smith posted, you know, something, and he's a knowledgeable guy, you know, and even the announcers, whom I hated, uh, said something about how, well, you know, the Americans are good floor players, but they're, they don't have stage experience. I don't know that I really bought that because, you know, you've been to the tournaments in Chicago. We, we always had a stage. Yeah. But a lot of the tournaments uh, that you go to don't. Uh, they may have like a finals board that looks like all the other boards, except, you know, it's like maybe three feet further away than mm-hmm. all the other ones or something like that. Or they'll just put you on a board and they'll say, okay, don't play on the boards adjacent because now it's a semifinal, now it's a final and stuff like that. But this is part of the reason I thought the Players Challenge Series was going to help everyone. Because you need to get up there and know that everyone is watching you. This was kind of an epiphany I had, you know, when I played Danny Delfino in uh, in New Orleans. Right. Right, because all of a sudden it was going to be streamed, and you see the guy with the camera, and you start thinking, geez, everybody's going to watch this. And it changes your, it changes your, your mental, your, your kind mental of mental thought. focus, right? Yeah. Now, how do, you, how do you prepare for that? You know, how do you prepare for getting on a stage with these, like what did Mark Fair said, it was like 15 degrees hotter or something yeah. like that? I mean, right. how do you prepare for that? So, you know, we're, we're going to have to start working towards that. We're going to have to start getting people up. And, and that was kind of like I was like thinking the Players Challenge Series mm-hmm. was really going to help. And I talked to Darren and, you know, he, he sort of agreed that, you know, we all need experience, you know, getting up on stage. I mean, there's a, like a really cool stage at Myrtle Beach, but it's decorated with Halloween stuff. So literally you can't walk and grab your darts. You have to grab them and walk straight back to the line. <laughs> I mean... It's like to, to be on a stage, and, and like I know they have one at Stanford, and I, I don't know, you go to tournaments on the East Coast, Anthony, and you feel free to mm-hmm. just jump in here as I ramble. Okay. It's um, not easy to well, do, but just, you know, speak whenever you want. All right. Well, uh, I, I will chime in one quick thing. When you said, you know, uh, um, uh, about prep, that's, that, that's when it starts to fall at the feet of guys like me. Um, to, to make these these things available to the players and set this stuff up so we do help you prep uh, for the atmosphere and uh, and to be more prepared to be more comfortable and like you said it, it's about eyeballs um, it's about turning around and realizing that the whole room is staring at you and the more you do that the more comfortable you'll be with it but the first time you have to do that um, is extremely off-putting yeah and it, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, because that does kind of, you can go to the next one there. Um, it does kind of like feed into whatever the next one is, which I can't even see it. So what does it say? And make sure we got um, sound when this is on. Somebody said there was no sound when this Oh, okay. Was Hang on. on a second. Okay. I literally cannot see the sound thing. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll chime in and I'll, and I'll let me just uh, set the set the scene in this way. Where This is, you know, the, hang on, the, hang heading, on is, three the se- heading is about Widmeyer. Yeah. Hang but, on three. Um, hang on three seconds. Sure. Sure. Oh, all right. Okay, I think I think we that'll got fix now. it there now, Anthony. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So what, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I just wanted to say that you know, um, Jimmy played this week, so he's he's the topic of conversation in a way. But I mean, I know the broader point is more about American players or North American players going over and playing on stage. So it's not. It, it, well, I know from my point standpoint, we're not. It's not. We're not just focusing on Jim. It's an overall no. analysis of what players experience in the translation from, you know, United States settings to stages and, and exactly. televised events. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, I like Jimmy and, you know, we, we talk and, and he knows, you know, I'm not out here to rip him, but it, I thought this was a really good, because everybody watched the match, everybody that could, he, I, I thought it was a good way of, of kind of talking about some of the things that we need to focus on, you know, as a darting community going forward. Because yeah. 
you know, it's, it's a great, it's a learn, it's it's a it's a oh, what did I what did I call it? It's a it's a discussion point. It's a jumping off point. It's a chance to say let's have a discussion about it. Let's analyze, you know, w- what we saw and and if we see things that can be corrected or adjusted, well, let's do it. Let's do it as a group. Let's do it as a community. Let's let's get more people in front of eyeballs, like you said at at the bigger opens and stuff instead of it just being that, that, that one board that you can't play on the side of, um, it, it, do wow. the best we can yeah. while everyone else is playing event. some other event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stop the event for 15 minutes and have everybody in the room, watch them, you know, um, or, you know, do, do, do as many little things as you can do to prep players for, a, for a bigger setting. Right. And I think that this will help. It's not going to be a solution. We're not going to be able to replicate playing in front of 3,000 screaming people. No, that's, but, that's you know, if, if we want big-time darts in America, we got to start moving in this direction. So I think it's important that we identify at least some of the issues that we need to be looking at addressing, right? And once we all agree on those, you know, then we could start, you know, influencing whoever we can influence to take those steps. L- let, let's move on to reason number two. Technophobia. Um, yeah, technophobia. This is, uh, Jim's not going to like this. So I'm watching, you know, I'm watching. Is he going to like any of the f- fact that we're saying the 10 reasons he didn't win? <laughs> um, he, he can come on the show next week and, and you know, tell me the error of my ways. But right. uh, the technophobia, you know, to be honest, you know, this was just a matter of, and, and I mentioned this on the show a while ago, you don't want your darts going into the board all the way to the barrel. You know, you're you're shrinking the target that you're throwing at, and you're making it much more likely that you're going to, you know, barrel out of the triple. If you look at, at the, especially the PDC guys, I mean, you can see almost a half inch of their points. They can throw 12 darts into the triple 20 because the boards are dense yeah. and the points that they're sense. using I never thought will stick. Well, right. this is technophobia, I call it, just because it's like, you know, Jimmy looks to me like he's throwing typewriters. Just he's, amped up? Well, it, it, no, Jimmy throws a firm dart. Jimmy throws with authority. But you need to you know, do things to your own advantage. If Jimmy changed his points and, they didn't, and he left an extra quarter inch, he'd hit more ton 80s. Okay. That's why these guys do it. It's not an accident. My old man in the late seventies was was a big proponent of that, the the longer point theory. And he used to take witty points and transfer them into a steel tip darts and they'd be these really extra long points for that very reason that you'd have more more playing area to put an additional dart in. It it totally helps you. And if you if you look at all the top PDC guys, you know, with the exception of Taylor, they all do it. Taylor's kind of given up on ton 80s, and he, he just wants to, like, rain ton 40s on people. He'll take the ton 80s. He'll throw the cover shots. But, you know, to, that was the one thing I looked at. I looked at Jimmy, and, I'm, and I saw a couple of bad deflections, and I'm like, well, okay. He doesn't want to use carbon fiber spinning shafts. It would have helped him on that. Sometimes they don't help. I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things. But I'm like, the points, he needs to rethink. You know, everybody does. Everybody, if if – if you look and I analyze the, stati- the statistics on Jimmy's match, Jimmy, part of the reason that he lost was he got outscored in the first nine darts. And part of the reason he got outscored in the first nine darts is when he would get one in, there wasn't room for a second mm-hmm. one. Right. Well, okay, maybe, maybe this is why I'm here. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little That's Jimmy That's why you're defending. here, buddy. <laughs> it, this is not um, anything personal against no, against no, Jimmy. This is sort no, of I, like of you know course. longer well, points help. That's why I, that's why I yeah. made that preface at the beginning to try and say that that like yeah we're kind of like watching a match that just took place and Jimmy was playing in it. So it's not you know um uh yeah, he but looked Jimmy's good up game there. Yeah. to me in my opinion is actually um moving around the board and and hitting cover shots. Um like that's his strength is not necessarily pitting on eight. He's like, we just, uh, uh, Adam just gave me stats from, uh, from, I think this year's tour and the amount of, uh, one, what was it like, you know, one, one hundreds to one forties that Jimmy hit was uh, astronomical more than his ton eighties. Like Jimmy's a big one, three, four, one, three, seven guy. That's, yeah, and you that's, have to that's what I see. But again, it go, might go back to your point about, uh, and I know this isn't a word, but I'll use it anyway. Comfortability, you know, uh, in a setting that he might be more comfortable at, he's gonna stroke those one three sevens more often than he might be in in a in a setting that 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 
takes that gives him an, an edge, an uncomfortable edge. Right. Okay. Well, let's move on because that that kind of touches on. If you scroll down, so we could see both of them, Mark. You want to see both? Yeah, because they kind of go together. Uh, Three the and next, four. Yeah, the next two reasons. The next this two reasons. Not the meeting. Well, because he you just told mentioned. Me only it. do one I, at a time. We're, we're you know you gotta <laughs> go with the flow here. No, right. because you know, uh, two other reasons that Jimmy didn't win. One was confidence, and one was comfort. Mm-hmm. Right. There's no way you're gonna convince me, and I don't think Jimmy would say that he felt comfortable up there from the first dart on. Right. Well, I he got he comfortable. Looked- yeah, I thought compared to Sunday, he looked much more comfortable. Yeah. Now, well, of course, it's a I wasn't progression. Gonna, wasn't going to mention Sunday, but he just looked oh. uh, he just looked very uncomfortable on Sunday, and I, I I thought he was nervous, but I you know I don't I know yeah, I don't I'm know him that well. Spec- but, like I'm not going to yeah. speculate that you know just uh, again staying with the overall theme about experience and about us sending players over or giving them the experiences here. The more and more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to be. Yeah, that's very true, and I, I and I think you know Jimmy's the first American to win a match at Lakeside since the '90s, and the first American to even show up in I don't know how many years, ten years no. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no way you're going to tell me that, especially Lakeside, which Lakeside strikes me as kind of like a club tournament. You got a lot of a lot of the darters are watching, a lot of the darters' families watching. Got people watching in dart shirts. It's not like the PDC crowd. Which is, uh, you know, the PDC crowd are, are fans, lots mm-hmm. of fans, right. thousands of fans screaming, yelling, singing, uh, you know, exhorting the players and stuff like that. The, the BDO crowd's much quieter, and they all seem to kind of know each other, you know. So it strikes me as more of a club tournament, and if that's true, then I would think you'd be way more uncomfortable coming in as an outsider. You know, even Good though, point. you know, yeah, yeah. even though, you yeah. know, Jimmy knows Stephen that. Bunning and, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're friendly and everything, but once you get on the stage, I mean, he's not going to be your friend. Right. You know, if anything, he's going to try to, you know, <laughs> end you quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the comfort and the confidence kind of go hand in hand. I mean, Jimmy, it was really funny when his back was to the wall. That's when I saw Jimmy Widmer. You know, yeah. When he was down right. two in sets the last, to nothing in the last set, he played a really well, good third set, and I'm like, okay, that's set. the guy that I see, you know, around the states, mm-hmm. you know. And and so, how do you get him to show up from the first start on, or anybody? Not we're not, you know, it's not picking mm-hmm. on Jim, but you know, how do you get it to the point where you're just as comfortable on the stage as the Englishman in England in front of the English fans? You know what I mean? I mean, it's Repetition. a road game. Yeah, it's got, it's just, yeah, repetition here, repetition. Repetition here, playing in front of crowds. You know, sometimes you know the crowds rooting for your opponent. Right. People that are vocal. You know, having the focus of of everybody, having everybody's attention on you. You know, it, it's one thing to you know play good in a corner somewhere. You know, and that's yeah, that's this whole floor to, player thing. You have to yeah. be able to get over the fact that somebody's rooting against you in a, in a crowd. Yeah, you know, or rooting for you, yet you have to keep your emotions down at that same time too. So, you have to be able to stay focused in the element. Yeah, and Absolutely. and you know, the crowd will get your adrenaline going, and mm-hmm. you need to learn how to play with that extra, you know, adrenaline, nervous energy, you know, whatever you call it. That takes that takes experience, just the right. same way. You know, when you first go to a tournament, you're really nervous. Eventually, you're not. Eventually, you get used to it. It's like getting used to it at the next level exactly. or at the top level. Right. Right. Where, you know, if we're going to have big time darts in America, a lot of guys are going to have to get used to this. A lot of guys are going to have to learn how to play their best game when everyone is watching mm-hmm. is kind of like the whole deal with that. Let's 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 move on here. You agreed with that, I assume, Anthony. Oh, absolutely. And I could chime in about stuff we're doing in, in here in New York. But I know it seems redundant sometimes to people around the country. Country, but it, th- these are the exact goals that we're doing. You know, when we had our big finals in December, is there's you know there's no music on and there's there's one board, so every match is a focus of the whole place and you know it's a packed crowd, packed house, and the whole point is to exactly kind of replicate that experience as best we can. You know, right? You're you're cutting out a little bit, but we're getting most of okay. it. Uh, we're going to move on number to the next. Number five uh, is is this number five? Damina. Yeah, stamina. This was this was something I found remarkable. They didn't take any commercial breaks. They went. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Well, we kind of touched on experience. You could just throw them both on. There All right. Five we're going and long. six. Yeah. Put five and six up there because we're going long. 
No, but the stamina issue was really I, – I, that was the, one of the biggest differences between Lakeside and the PDC is, you know, the PDC takes a TV timeout between the first set and the second set and the second set and mm-hmm. the third set and the fourth and the fifth set. These guys played straight through. Jimmy's match on, I think it was Sunday, where he went down to the last set with uh, – Gary this, Thompson. Uh, yeah, Gary Thompson, uh, who I believe is an Englishman. If not, mm-hmm. uh, he's from the U.K., uh, and he had he had the crowd behind him, and you know these guys were not they they both obviously weren't playing their best starts, but I mean literally it was leg after leg after leg, and there was no break, so they ended it up went playing. An hour. Yeah, they played an hour straight with no break. How you don't do that at American tournaments? Right. You don't do it on the diddle <coughs> tour where you're playing best of three. <coughs> you may play three legs in an hour. Yeah, yeah. Some so, somewhere somewhere you might play that long. Yeah, <coughs> uh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is true. No, I'm just saying that oh. it's like that to get used to that and and to to have the the mental stamina to stay in there and and keep pitching when when things are not going your way. That was the funny thing, and the one thing I'll say I was really happy uh, watching Wid is when he fell behind. You know, he really stepped it up. You know, he he came out. You know, he came out fighting. He didn't just quit. I mean, he you know he he fell behind the guy uh, uh, Gary Thompson. And when I think back to back thirteen darters to mm-hmm. you know level the match, right. and it yep. was like, yep, you know I'm like that's the guy I'm used to seeing. So it, it, it's just kind of funny how that works, you know. And then also, you know, how do you have experience playing for an hour straight unless you do it? Well, sure, right. And the, yeah, and, I mean, how often does anybody do that? Well, and that and that was the other thing, you know, when I did write down experience, what I was thinking about uh, with that one is. You know, people like Darren and people like Jimmy and, and you know, the, the, the top names in America, you know, put any, any name you want. I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody by not saying their name, like Larry Butler or something. These guys aren't really used to playing close matches. Mm-hmm. And they're not used to playing guys that are right on them every single leg. Right. Right? How do you get experience like that? You have to, you have to be playing this stuff and you have to be pushed. Sure. And you have to be playing guys that are just as committed and you know, just as serious as you are. All sports are like that. Yeah, you get the you get the number one team that runs away with it for the first three months of the season, or whatever sport you're talking about, and all of a sudden they face somebody that all of a sudden is equal to them. Yeah, it almost they happened to Florida know, State. They don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, Florida State in the first yeah. half was like. The, they look like uh, the deer like, caught in the These guys aren't supposed to be that good. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they if they well you, you know, know really I mean. would have characterized it that way right, but, it, but they're not used to being in close games mm-hmm. they're used to being ahead 30 points at the half right you know what i'm saying i mean it was an act of total desperation a fake punt oh yeah they yeah i mean if that backfires they lose by 40 right I, I'm sorry but no i agree it's, football analogy there but, but it's but. this you know i agree with the concept it, it it happens in all sports and this is a sport and i it happens to everybody and again this is where i think the players challenge series is going to help everybody not to toot our own horn but you know, the idea that, you you know, guys are going to get up there and have to play these long formats and have to play them under stress and have to play them against other good players, it's going to make everybody better. Mm. It right. can't wait. It can't, right? I mean, yeah, you're buying into this, right, Anthony? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Of course I am. And Not that's, just because we I, gave an award. I mean, you'd have bought into it anyway. He was buying into it before today. Right. I, I would have come on and give you my whole spiel no matter what we did tonight. So, um, yeah, the the thing aside, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I'm really appreciating this whole conversation because it's about like what I want to now express is, yeah, everything you're speaking about tonight is this is why I want people to try around the country and replicate you know, as much as they can what we're doing in New York because all it really is about is players playing – other players um, who are at the same level or close and, and you know, and, and have a desire to, to, to be good um, uh, repetitively. Boom, 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 boom. Play it, play and play and play and play. And everybody gets better for it. And everybody gets more comfortable playing longer, tougher matches and, you know, uh, big, tough fields. Uh, and, and it pays off. It pays off in spades. And you could you could ask most of the players that play here in New York. So that's that. Like I just desperately want that to be replicated around the country because the more we can do it on a local level, players not traveling too much, 
getting tough competition every you know four weeks, every five weeks locally. Then they step up and do a couple of national events, and then ultimately the people that earn their way out of that whole thing get to go internationally and are better prepared. So we start. You got to start from the bottom up. Yeah, we we need a progression. Because wouldn't you have to? I mean, wouldn't you also have to learn how to? You know, you have to accept the highs and lows. And the longer the format, there's more highs and more lows. I mean, you could throw great for you know two sets, and then all of a sudden you you know you have to assume that your opponent is going to come back. Well, the opponent sucks it up and comes back, and then you have to be able to deal with the fact that he didn't quit. Yeah, you, you saw a lot of that in the PDC. You saw a lot of ebb and flow. You saw mm-hmm. a lot of you know counterattacks kind of thing, where uh, you know but you know you're playing best of three there's or no something. Ebb and flow there's no time three, to do anything. Right, right. I mean, it's just uh, so. Oh God, you, I mean, there's tour. there's so many things to learn. Learn so and, many things and, and to get learn. better at. And here's the one thing that that all the Americans, you know, that I can think of need to work on, and that's finishing. And, you know, finishing is more than just hitting a double. And this is a concept, I think, that, you know, as we play more and more long format 501, I think people are going to get a sense of what I'm talking about. You know, finishing starts way earlier than the time you're throwing at a double, right? It starts way earlier than, you know, when you're on... Starts at 350. Yeah. You, when you're on 195 and you're like, ooh, I need a bull for 170. I mean, finishing is, is a state of mind. Mm-hmm. Fin- you know, a good finisher is thinking of finishing the leg as the leg is starting. You know, you, there's I see so many guys that play good and, and score well their first 9, 12 darts. And then the minute they're under 200, they slow down and they start searching. And you could just see their confidence level go down. And you don't see that from international players. You don't see that from Brits. All they do is play 501. You, you don't see, you see some guys relishing a finish. You see guys that, you know, oh, I want to take out that 143. Whereas you look at Americans that are like, oh, my God, I'm on 143. I got to hit two triples, <laughs> you know. And this is, this is a state of mind, I think, that, you know, as we play more and more long format 501, I think, you know, people are going to get what I'm saying. It may be a little esoteric right now. But um, let's let's move on because it, Lord knows how long this segment is. Um, oh, did we lose our mouse? Awesome! Again, the oh, battery's I think the battery on already. Died. Oh my God! Rut row. <laughs> nice timing. All right, here's what you need to do. You need to help us out. You need to go. Um, I have to go. Yeah, grab the mouse off the off the desk and take the battery out. This is surgery. Okay, so I guess we'll have to keep going. The <laughs> Wow. Hey, anybody can work under ideal conditions, you know. Adapt and overcome. You know, we have no staff. No, the next, uh, you have to slide the bottom thing. The the next reason of, I forgot what number we're on, is geography. And basically, this ties into, you know, playing, you know, the top players and, oh, you know, what's the wrong size? (laughs) (laughs) We we look in the desk for a double A. We... Or, no, you know what? Grab his mouse off, Mark. I have a feeling uh, somebody in the office swapped batteries with me. Mark? Where's his mouse? Oh. It's over there. Uh, the next... <laughs> what a show. The next, uh, the next one is geography, and this ties into uh, what we're talking about before. I just want battery. Uh, you know, where, you know, yeah, Jimmy needs to play all the best players, but how many are around? How many are available? Like, uh, there's one guy that, you know, asked me to come practice, and I said I would, and then it was Christmas and the holidays, and then, you know, blow 20 wind chills and stuff, and, you know, an hour and a half drive to his house to practice, you know, I couldn't do it. But there's got to be a way for people to get together and play together and compete together more often. If webcam darts is, is one way of doing it, then people need to get on webcam darts and, you know, get their practice in and stuff like that, because to be on oh, there we go. To be honest, I mean, you have to play the best players as often as you can if you, if you want to improve. And if you want to compete at a level where you're going to Lakeside or you're going to the you know PDC Championship, where are you going to find you, these guys? There aren't that many. On a, on a, you have to be pushed on a regular basis. Yeah, and the better you get, the harder it is to uh, to get pushed. I missed half that segment, so yeah, I don't know what you guys you are talking really about. Really, so. Move down to the next. Uh, <laughs> we'll finish this up and take a break. Oh, oh, yeah. Is this the last one? Is this the number one reason? No. How many more we got? You got two. Two. Okay. 
and and this is reason number two why Jim lost. And nine. it's just one this would be reason nine. number nine. <laughs> and this is just one word. Number and it, nine. And it's probably self explanatory. There it is. You what does it say? Cricket. Yeah. Does he play too much cricket? All Americans do. Here's how it works. I mean, I saw Jimmy post something about he traveled twenty weekends uh in twenty thirteen playing darts, which is great. But if you spend half your time playing cricket, it's like playing 10 weekends. Mm-hmm. You know, all we do is play cricket. Then how are you going to play against people that only play 501? Right. So, I mean, we need to make some sort of decision here. I mean, maybe, and I've heard this suggested, maybe the solution is for American darts to bail on 501 and just play cricket and try to, it's not going to work, but I'm just saying in theory, you could probably do that. But if you're playing two different types of games and the other guy's only playing one, and then you're going to go on his turf and play his game, how's that supposed yeah, to work? What, how are your chances? Yeah, and I, I did a little bit of research. I mean, I mean, you know, cricket was kind of like the American game, and, and you know, I don't know if you want to call it patriotic, but, you know, people were kind of saying, oh, well, you know, we're Americans, we should play cricket. It, is like cricket doesn't help you. Cricket doesn't help your overall game much either because you're only throwing it like seven points on the board. In Chris five Forbes one, you throw it all of them. Okay, well, you know, there, there are going to be people that take issue with this. And we've said it on the show before, but just the simple math. If you spend 1,000 hours a year playing darts and you spend 500 playing cricket and 500 playing 501 and you're going to go play somebody who only plays 1,000 hours of 501, you're at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Unless you can convince me that somehow playing 500 hours of cricket is going to help your 01 game. How? Mm -hmm. You're not going to convince me. How's how's that going to work? Well, that's, that's been my reply as to why people ask why I focus on 501. I explain that as a player, I've always enjoyed cricket. I grew up, but I, I do play cricket. I love the game. But the purpose of getting into everything that I've gotten into in terms of promoting has been to prep players to play on a big stage. So yeah, the, all I'm going to do is focus on 501. Yeah, the international until standard playing, is 501. Until they, until they play cricket in the world championships, then I'm not going to train you to go play cricket. And And that's never going to happen. So if we're not if we so if we don't want to focus on five hundred one, then let's not even go over there and try and compete or compete on any if they come here anything like that. If we if if we don't want to give it a shot and go and, and then let's not compete. If we're not going to focus on it and work at it, then let's not even compete. Yeah, you're talking about you know there was somebody you know talking about Olympic darts and stuff like that. Do you really think that the if it was Olympic darts they'd be playing cricket? There's no way. The international standard is five hundred one. Ask right. ask anybody from the UK and they'll tell you. Half of them don't even know what cricket is, <laughs> right? Not that they well, couldn't play different... it if they didn't yeah. learn it, but I mean, it, and they and you know they all look cricket's at cricket's the second most popular sport in the, in the in the world. Yeah, that cricket. That cricket. Right. I don't even That's understand the cricket, that cricket. They would know. No, but I'm, but I'm serious when I say that if you want to if you want to complete compete internationally and be successful, you have to play 501 mm-hmm. and you have to focus on 501. And okay, yeah, sure, I'll play cricket singles, whatever. But we spend way too much time tournament after tournament, weekend after weekend playing cricket, and that takes away from all that development right. time that you could use working well, you on know, your athletes, finishing and athletes, working on your 501. Athletes do cross training. I don't think it's very good cross training. Somebody's no, going to have to convince me somehow that throwing at the triple fifteen is, is going to somehow help your five hundred one game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It it just doesn't work that way, and nobody trains that way. You you think that Phil Taylor spends like four hours a day playing cricket because he thinks it's going to help his O one game? He's working on finishing mm. because finishing is what it's all about. So I was saying before, it's a state of mind. Anyway, I'm not going to get on some rant on <laughs> cricket. Let me show you the last reason number 10. that we'd lost. We do okay. have number 10. Well, I did sort of post this, but... Did you? Shirt yeah. tucking? Yeah. Wid did not tuck in his shirt when he played Stephen Bunting, and he tucked in his shirt on the, on day one when he won. So I don't understand. I don't Honestly, I don't understand a player that tucks in his shirt and wins and then goes to the next match and doesn't tuck in his shirt. I put my socks really, on left and right, and if I accidentally put them on in the wrong order and I beat, like, Phil Taylor, believe me, I would never go back to the old order. I'd keep them be, the same. 
I, I, I don't I don't understand it. Okay. That I'm just you know, if if you start every match with a, a brand new set of flights, okay, fine. But if you just want a match with a set of flights, why would you change them? They're working. You don't <laughs> You see <laughs> They're working. Well, well I'm just saying mess, I, I mean every the juju. you know, hey, look, when your margin of error is is a couple of millimeters, you know, it's a flap of a butterfly's wings can make you miss. So let let's eliminate all the uh, So there's a little superstition any doubt. involved. Hey, it's working. Don't hey, fix it. It's working. I'm right. not saying, you know, if you if you win a match on Saturday, don't take a shower on you no, know, no, no. play smelly change on your Sunday. Socks, change your underwear, change your shorts, whatever. But put them on in put, the right order. Yeah, right. Wear the same right. color. Whatever. I couldn't even understand the shirts he was wearing. <laughs> you know, I you know, one said Jimmy and I was like, Okay, well, I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, like come that, on, that's a great shirt. It says Jimmy. It's it's like in uh, says, Color of Money nice where the guy wears Captain a shirt America that says Vince. Great. Is that what that was? I couldn't yes. make out what it was. Okay. Well, he needed bolder colors. I couldn't make it out. Pat McKeon designed that for him, if oh, I'm did not he? mistaken. I'll give Pat a shout out. Well, they never they never had a camera shot of his back where I could actually see it. Although I did see Wayne, and I waved to him, and he didn't wave back. I'm not going to take that personal, but that was pretty cool. Which which Wayne? The real Wayne? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not Martle. Anyway, okay. Not, the, li- not the little Wayne? We little, have no Wayne? Well, they 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 gave a shout out to Wayne who, but uh, they didn't Wayne show him. Budget, who was there, and they and they they gave him a birthday acknowledgement, but they showed the wrong person. Yeah, but I waved anyway, and he <laughs> didn't wave back. And I, I'm not going to take that personally because Wayne's a good guy. Anyway, we're going to take a break. You're listening to Dart Talk with uh, Mystery Mark, Steve Pantelman, and uh, 2013 Darter of the Year Anthony Eugenia, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Dart Talk agrees to adhere to the Geneva Convention in treating fairly its prisoners in their war against lackluster darting administration and behaviour. Okay, back for the... uh Delayed fourth quarter, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. TheDartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. 
it was kind of funny, you know. What would you think of Anthony? I mean, is he great or what? Oh, he's awesome. And completely, uh, I can't think of the word I was looking for, okay. but not uh, not expecting the award. Well, so I'm, I'm glad we, we did we did duke him pretty well. I kind of feel bad about that. I missed a lot. Yeah, it was but fun. I had good intentions. It was fun. Yeah, I think the good intentions worked out. Yeah, I was. I I didn't think we were actually going to surprise him, so that was kind of cool. He, I, I can't imagine anybody who does as much for darts mm-hmm. and doesn't get a dime. I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, all the players, you know, that did well and stuff. At least they were compensated. Yeah, you know, they got prize money or, or what have you, and it, the, you know. The tournament officials are, you know, vastly underappreciated. All they do is, like, hear gripes from everybody. This is late. Where's this? Where's this? And then, you know, if five people say you did a good job at the end of the weekend, you know, they're they're so grateful. And, you know, as darters, you know, we should, you know, totally be nice and patient and thankful to all the volunteers that put on all the tournaments. Right. Which, by the way, you all need to go to Ray Chesney this weekend and check out a Darren Young and Mark Ferris match. The alternate universe segment that we were going to do was basically me like complaining that, you know, these these people in the BDO and and Tony Green, I guess, and the BBC, I don't know what world they live in where they're saying Stephen Bunting's the number one player in the world. I don't know what world they're talking about. <laughs> their their you world. Know, but this this ridiculousness. And the sky is black. We're going to end world. this pretty soon. But, you know, somebody had posted something about darts in the Olympics, and he was very unhappy with me when I said, well, I can't imagine, you know, who would run it and who would pick the team. And he was kind of like, he wasn't mean or anything, but he was kind of like, well, that's a negative comment. And it's like, look at the BDO, right? The BDO. Uh, pretends that the PDC and all their players don't exist, and they're the best players in the world. Now, it's not to say there weren't some good players in the BDO today, and, you know, the days I've watched, there were some great matches. Uh, Christian Kist had a great match. Alan Norris played a great match today. And I watched uh, Wilson play twice. That guy's great. I mean, and and any of those guys, if they wanted to commit themselves to play darts full-time and go on the PDC tour, I'm sure they'd do okay. I don't think they'd be in the top four, or beating the top four guys anytime soon, but you never know until you try. So I'm not like saying anything against the BDO players, but if you have an organization that is intent on pretending that another organization and all their players don't exist, that I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when the NFL and the AFL were fighting, you know, at least it wasn't, let's pretend they don't exist. Let's pretend Joe Namath dropped off the planet until, you know, the Jets come over stuff. I mean, nobody's that stupid. So why do you put on this pretense and say Stephen Bunting's the number one player in the world? I mean, I go ahead and say he's the number one seed. Say he's the top-ranked BDO player, whatever. Yeah, right. you, you, you know, you don't have to acknowledge the PDC. Just don't lie to everybody as if somehow they're not going to know later. Because right. you end up just looking even stupid. In, even in boxing, there's different... Sanctions are yeah everywhere, but they, nobody's yeah. they're still the number one WBO or number one WBC. Right. They're not the number one. And as journalists, everyone right. points that out. Mm-hmm. I mean, the New York Times d- doesn't pretend something doesn't exist, right? You just yeah. call it what it is, and and you're fine. If if Stephen Bunting's the number one ranked BDO player in the world, isn't that enough? It's true, right? You know, to say he's the number one player in the world is is absolutely laughable and an insult to all these great players at mm-hmm. the PDC, some of which came over from the BDO. I get the resentment. I get the fact that the BDO doesn't like the PDC and all that stuff. We shouldn't be involved with this at all. But I was just infuriated by this alternate universe that they have, you know, where they sort of pretend. It's only them. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know, Anthony was right. I mean, you know, the announcer was was kind of condescending and dismissive and it was a nice little oh you're a good player jimmy but (laughs) you're playing this guy was sort of like very unprofessional i thought very condescending and very insulting as as far as american darters and and that's the one thing i would really love to fix is let's get our players going let's get them prepared right let's go through what we can do we'll do what we can do right and you know we'll get somebody over there to you know kick some ass Mm -hmm. And, you know, get a little respect. I mean, I, I can understand the Brits not respecting our games. You know, they come over here. Guys are intimidated. Guys don't want to play. What, whatever. I mean, but we can change that. There's plenty of players in America. There's Don't tell me 
that if you take the top 100 players or 200 players, soft tip, steel tip, I don't care. Don't tell me that if they didn't commit themselves to the game that they couldn't beat these guys. Don't tell me these guys are born better, that they're born better dart players. They may start at a younger age, but I, I don't buy that for a second. It, it's, it's the system that we have here. That does not. It, it's, not it's, it's a to huge that handicap. Right. I mean, it's yeah. you know to have to under overcome your own system to go and compete overseas against other people. I mean, who else has to do that? Our figure skaters don't do it. This whole Olympic discussion was like a joke to me because I'm like, well, the BDO is basically going to say, well, we're picking the English team, and if you play in the PDC in the last ten years, you can't be on it. What, right. what kind of Olympics is that going to be? I don't know how it would work in America, but what about the soft tip players? There's some fabulous soft tip players. Well, they don't count. Soft tip's not a sport, so you guys go away. doesn't work that way. Right. Right? So how are you going to even have an organization that everybody would kind of fall behind? Just because it's the Olympics, I'm supposed to be like, okay, yeah, let the ADO Whatever run you it. Say. Oh, my yeah. God, I don't agree with anything they've done in, in five years. Right. All of a sudden, it's everything's going to be fine? No. I'm not going to support that. <laughs> anyway, next week... We got next uh, well, week. First of all, real quick question: Is oh, the uh, young the is the down. young fair match going to be streamed? Um, I don't believe it's going to be streamed. Uh, we're going to stream as many of these matches as we can. I I have we we have experts to help people that want to stream them, but it's going to depend on the venue and whether or not you can get Wi Fi and whether you can get yeah, a signal. What you're actually going to be able to come up with. And I'm not going to be in Philly to to kind of like coordinate this. So you know, some of the players are going to have to kind of like run their own interference at these tournaments. I'm not sure quite how that's going to work out. They're going to have to be patient, and you know, hopefully things are going to work out really well. We're going to stream as much of this stuff as as we can. If if the matches are going to be held at a place that has streaming, then we're going to get these mm -hmm. matches in front of the cameras if we can. I mean, I'm assuming that the tournament directors and the tournament staffs are going to absolutely embrace this idea and give us all the cooperation that they can, even though some of them haven't even heard about it yet. <laughs> right. So maybe I'm making an assumption here, but um, we'll stream what we can. I mean, I can literally hold up my phone and stream something if I can get a signal. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, with smartphones and everything, it's just a matter of what kind of quality are you going to get. You're not going to get streaming all these matches like uh, David Irie did in uh, New Orleans, traipsing around with, you know, 20 grand worth of equipment and, you know, stuff like that. But the way I look at it is is that we, we set up these matches, we set up the structure, we get the tournaments, you know, to like it and stuff like that. And then eventually the, every tournament is going to be streaming something. And then, you know, maybe next year we'll have like half right. of them streamed or, you know, 80%, you know, whatever. Uh, this we're, we're starting from ground zero here, so we'll do the best we can. But we're definitely, if there's any chance of streaming it, then we're, we're going to do it. Happen, That's right. for sure. Um, all right. So next week we'll ha we'll have results from the Ray Chesney. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get Darren Young to talk about the match since he ducked us this week. He right, was traveling, right. and, and Mark Fair came on, or we'll get Mark on to talk about the match and see how it went. And then uh, we will announce, and I will publish the uh, probably on Sunday. I will publish all the matches that are scheduled. There's a lot of them. I could tell you right now, uh, the Camellia Classic, Camilla, Camilla, Camellia, in uh, Sacramento. Uh, Chris White's going to play Scotty Burnett. We're trying to get uh, the New York, New Jersey Open. George Timpone's going to play. I'm not sure who he's going to play yet. A uh, couple of choices there. Um, every tournament, I believe, even in Wichita, Conley Litton at the Wichita, at the Air Cap Open. Uh, Conley Litton is going to play somebody. The idea is we're going to get people you have that a, are already going. Do you have a, go yeah, a strategy we, if, uh, like, you know, somebody doesn't show up? Yeah, we have backups in the wings waiting to go. We got the. This is really popular with the players. People are like, yeah, I want in, I want in, I want okay. in, I want in. But, you know, we can only have 32, so there's going to be some omissions. I'm not scheduled to play, you know. I mean, I may be, you know, if it turns out somebody can't play, maybe I'll jump in there or something there's plenty of people we're not gonna have a problem getting players mm -hmm. it's a matter of getting these regional matchups that people want to see that's kind of the yeah. goal right i mean you know uh, so anyway there's going to be more on this uh down the road but all right uh, we'll have a facebook page that you can go and like and we'll list all the matches and stuff like that so um that's going to probably be this weekend uh what else we got for next week yeah jack wagon 
do Jack Wagon next <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, we'll do We're the Jack Wagon next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll do Jack Wagon. I mean, the nominations aren't as good as last year. So yeah, I don't know but what we're going to do about we that. We passed it up. We'll do it next week. We'll do it that week. Uh, what other matches? I know we had uh, Tim Adams is going to play Gary Moss, and that's set at the uh, Seacoast. No, no. I got that. Uh, You're going to publish this all anyway. Yeah, right? we're going to publish so it you all. Don't Space need to, Coast. You don't Space need Coast. to. No, because like, I, I see he's in the chat room. Okay. And I talked to Gary, <laughs> so that's all set. The Space Coast, we're going to have right. you know two Florida guys, like Gary Mawson and Tim Adams going to play. Uh, it's going to be great. You know, really great. When you guys see the lineup, you're gonna be right. you're gonna be thinking it's awesome. And uh, if Mark Fair can get someone to stream it, then uh, he'll stream the match this weekend. And as long as I find out, you know, the date and time, I'll post links and and we'll get it out to everybody. Um, so you guys can check our Facebook page for updates on that until the other page is up. Uh, you can always uh, go to darttalk.us. And you'll get uh, links to the podcast and our YouTube archive and all that stuff. You can always email darttalk at gmail.com if you have questions. If you want to nominate a player uh, to participate in one of these, uh, go ahead and send us their name and what tournament you want them to play at. And if, if somebody backs out and we need a substitute, we might be able to work them in. But um, the lineups are looking pretty set right now uh, as far as the player's challenge goes. You got anything? No, I think we covered it all. Yeah, we ran long. Thanks to Anthony Eugenia, uh, 2013 starter yes. of the year. Our congratulations and, and sincere gratitude Yeah, uh, for all he does, he does for the sport job. of darts. Thanks to uh, Mark Fair for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to uh, seeing that match and seeing how that goes. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be interested in that. And then uh, we're back on Wednesdays uh, on the hour at 8 now. 8 Central, 9 Eastern, Correct. 9 eight, uh, six, uh, six, uh, 6 Pacific. 6 Pacific, 8 Central, 9 Eastern. Right. Just like a, a normal TV show. We're up against, like, I think, Law & Order, SVU, Modern Family. So Yeah, I think you're right. You, know, yeah. you guys can, uh, you can always, when, when you come to the Ustream channel, if we're not on the air, last week's show will be airing. You can always DVR Modern Family. And you need to follow the, uh, you should follow us on Ustream. If you click follow, you'll get a little thing when we're on the air. And we may be throwing in little treats like we did today uh, before the show actually airs and before we record it. So what so, do we do with the, the, the prize that nobody won? Did nobody win? No. See, we, we, we surprised everyone. We did. Well, we'll give it away to we'll something else. Away. We'll we, figure something else Should out. we do something now? You want to do a trivia question? No. <laughs> okay. No, I do not. Okay. We'll give it away <laughs> next week then. Um, until then, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, everybody stay warm, stay safe traveling, especially if you're going to Philly. And uh, we will dart talk to you next week. You betcha. All right. Everybody take care. <laughs>